Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Pitts Motor Cast. Yo, Dave. I got on the line with you. Rocky Perone and Al Liebman. The Fat Ford Nostalgia Funny Car. We're going to talk about behind the door of the Nostalgia Funny Car. How you doing, guys? Hi, how are you? Doing good here in Philly. Still celebrating. What do you celebrate? Oh, yeah, the Philly Super Bowl. That's it. Once in a lifetime around here. Yeah, but you had idiots that uh, celebrated by uh, flipping cars open and cars over and all that guy. <laughs> That's every Saturday night in Philly. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so what do you guys want to say about it? Well, about behind the door of the nostalgia funny car, what do you guys want to say about it? Well, we're getting ready for another season and bring forward this year. Uh, we're looking at the full schedule already. Um, looking forward to a great year. Looking forward to going out there and uh, putting down a true 70s style funny car show with some big header flames, a lot of noise, a lot of smoke, and making a lot of people happy. A lot of dry hops. Oh yeah. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a funny car if it didn't do a dry hop. Yeah, I wish I wish all the nostalgia funny cars would bring back the long smoky burnouts and dry hops. They should make it a rule. Exactly. So what else is going on? Well, Rocky, I think, yeah, yeah. I think we got a pretty pretty full schedule. I think uh, you probably know it off the top of your head. Uh, if you're a frantic for it, uh, run, run it against Super Camaro. Maybe you want to uh, give, I guess, give, I don't have an open front to give Dave some dates and let him know uh, where we're going to be. And then uh, we can talk about, uh, you know, the frantic for it and what we're going to do this year with our sponsor. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, I'll, I'll look that date now, but in, uh, while we're doing this, you can look up actually what the dates are. We're going to have that in front of me right now. But uh, I mean, we're going to start the season early, and this year will be at Maple Bloom, actually for one of the divisional points races. Uh, and then we'll be putting a good show on for the fans with, uh, like I said, a, a true nostalgia retro funny car deal. Uh, I know we race uh, you know, well into the year. Uh, uh, we'll be at Dover, um, the Dover Dragway um, show. Um, the Lebanon Valley. I think that closes us out for the season. So, and in between, uh, we'll be at Cecil County, we'll be at Echo, uh, we'll be a lot of the East Coast tracks, and we're looking forward to, you know, to again, once again, appearing here um, you know, on the East Coast. You know, we get out to the California Hot Rod Reunion this year, but unfortunately, the date uh, fell on the same date as the East Coast track time for our famous year already committed, so. But, um, you know, we are looking forward to taking the show a little bit farther west. Uh, we're we're very blessed to have here in the East Coast so many fun racetracks that we can uh, run these cars at, and the people really enjoy seeing the old style funny cars. And um, hopefully, hopefully it'll it'll get bigger and bigger you know, throughout the, the whole country as far as the funny cars coming back to put on a great show. Yeah, the show. Hey, hey, Dave, Dave, we got we got a bunch of dates. I know Rocky missed a few here. Uh, we in Maple Grove a few times, so I think August and May. Uh, again, a lot of this stuff you can find on our website, franticport.com, with more or less more up to date on our Facebook page. Uh, we're going to be in Ireland with the Frantic Ford and tomorrow. Uh, like Rocky said, Lebanon Valley is going to be in Astor a few times. Uh, we're going to have the car to display at CRI. Uh, we're going to have it at the uh, Raging Junk booth, uh, which is pretty neat. So, uh, we're going to do something different. We're going to have the funny car in the booth. We're going to have the body up. So, uh, open on both sides. You know, besides, I guess, probably, what, 10 or 12 races we end up going to rock. We, we got some charity events. We do a few things. We do, uh, in, in July, we do Artie's Party, uh, which is a pinstriping jamboree we've been going there for the past, I think this could be our fifth year. We bring the Frantic Ford and the Super Clown up, and uh, we raise money uh, for Ronald McDonald House in Central New York. Uh, Artie's Party has Obviously, elite pin drivers, <laughs> they come out uh, on their own time. And over the past couple of years, we've all seen a lot of artwork sitting in a frantic port. Uh, we usually raise six, seven thousand dollars over the weekend. The total of about probably sixty-eight to seventy thousand uh, dollars. A couple other events we do. Uh, we do Labor Day weekend, which is uh, pretty close to my heart. Rocky knows we uh, we started this a few years ago with uh, a few funny cars, very important to come out. Chris Nazarella with his cars, and uh, Ben Mascara is a very large uh, car club out of New Jersey. 
uh, Sheridan and Mawa. This year we're going to have 16 dogs and funny cars there. Jet car. Uh, we're going to have a couple of fuel dragsters. Uh, we raised money there for Alex Love and Ace Foundation, which is one of our charities. We raised last year $4,500. We used to get 25,000 people in about 2,500 hot rods. So it's a, it's a pretty neat event. Uh, we bigger and bigger every year. Uh, and then in November, uh, we go to Alex Viola Foundation up in uh, Keller, Texas. Uh, Alex Viola, uh, of course, he passed away in Afghanistan a few years ago. And Frank Viola, his uh, father, is a very good friend of mine, a close uh, association I had with NEC. This is probably going to be our third year that we go out there and we help raise money for the Greenberry Foundation. And I think last year they raised about $30,000. So uh, between a few of those charities and uh, a bunch of cars and car shows and races and everything else, we're, we're usually busy from... Uh, end of April to almost this year it's going to be December. That's, that's very cool that you guys do the charity, though. Well, it's all about giving back, too. I mean, we're, uh, we're lucky to be in the position that we can do a lot of these, uh, these uh, charity events, uh, like I mentioned, the uh, Ronald McDonald House. Uh, we raised about 
going on there. Uh, everyone's got to understand that, uh, you know, I don't care what part of life you're in, uh, including, you know, with Napster, with, uh, you know, there's business decisions that have to be made. Uh, you know, people may not like them, but you have to do what you have to do to you know, keep your own, your own business afloat and sometimes your own family fed. So, uh, you know, to me, um, again, you know, even there's a lot of mixed emotions on all, I have to take the, the road of uh, being very thankful to be at the opportunity to be there. Uh, very thankful for any, you know, for using this and Alex for using this. And, uh, again, for all the great memories. Al comes shirking out a lot to this because, you know, he was back there in the days of the, the big funny car races and, uh, with Shady Glenn and them guys and we'll go into that. So I'm sure he's got a lot of great memories he'd like to share too. Oh yeah, you know, it's funny rock. I'm looking for a bunch of pictures. You know, there's a, there's a picture out there. I think everybody's seen it probably on Facebook. There's 3,200 funny cars uh, on the track with the old tower. And, I mean, Beatles there, and Flash Gordon is there, and McCall is there. And there's the Shady Glen. Um, yeah, sitting on the back of somebody's pickup truck. Um, Lloyd, may he rest in peace. We borrowed his truck. Uh, that was, I shouldn't say one of my, one of my earlier times, but, you know, I go back to English Town when I first cut my teeth with, with Tommy Ivor, with Fireball Vega, uh, let's see, Kosky Ivanov, uh, Pat Foster, um, Middlebrook worked with McCullough. I was there with Gary Genshin um, numerous times. Uh, so, it, it, yes, it was home for me, and that's where my friends and family came to see us, to keep it straight, but like Rocky said, um, sometimes people have to make a business decision. You know, we talk about Vinny, uh, Vinny Knapp and his brother Richie. Uh, I go back to the time where we used to go to the tower, and um, Uncle Louis, he was uh, behind the door. He could knock on the door, he'd slide up the window through. We look at you and ask you who the car was, and we give you a little off with your money in it. Um, and that was, you know, that was the time that we enjoyed, like Rocky said, long burnout, fly hops, go back up the car. 32 funny cars there. Frank was serving a rest in peace with the booking agent. He would be there. He booked in 16, you know, 24 cars. And the place was back. But unfortunately, you know, as we know in our sport, kind of dying a little bit, and we're bringing it back with our type of cars because we can't find younger generations that want to follow and do the footsteps of a funny cars or even who could afford it. So, uh, like Rocky said, what we do by bringing a friend for his memory back, uh, this is what, you know, the people want to see, a long burn out, the dry hop, the girls backing up, the girls backing up the car, or sometimes I back up the car. This is what they want to see. They don't care how fast it run. They just want to see the show. And this is what uh, Rocky, and I've been doing with Rocky, probably, I think this is our fifth year together. And it's been, it's been a win-win for everybody, for, you know, our sponsors, our charities, our fans, our Facebook fans, Instagram fans. They love it. <laughs> Yeah, that's what when I talk to, when I do interviews with some of the funny cars. I talk about how when my dad used to take me to drag races when I was four or five years old. That's what I used to big fields of funny cars, all the long burnouts and dry ops, like you were saying. The snake, the mongoose, Tommy Ivo, all them guys. Yeah. Those are the ones that uh, you know, got me. I always say. I always thought that Dunkin' and, uh, and George Dakota back here on the East Coast, you know, going mm-hmm. down there and laying burnouts through the traps and fleeing over the roof on the burnouts and backing up with uh, Jungle Fan and, you know, whatever, you know, Joe Hack, uh, you know, backing him up and then doing the dry hop stage and leaving. And I have no clue what they ran into wise by just going to that show and they always leaving pressure on me. And uh, that's what we try to go out there and, uh, and to do, you know, we try to hook the new fans with, with the old show, you know, the way it was back in the, in the, in the 70s, and, uh, you know, what made the funny car racing the, the case, you know, they, uh, they took over, the, you know, basically the crown from drags to the top fuel cars at the time, and they went out there, and these guys, you know, uh, the whole East Coast, West Coast, down South, wherever, um, you know, and they put these great shows on, and it always, it always impressed me. And that's why, you know, I always want to do it. And you know, Al said, you know, me and looked up uh, at least five years ago, probably probably closer to six. And, uh, you know, we've, been, we've had a, a great time bringing back the old school funny car show to the team. And uh, hopefully we get a chance to do a lot more. You know, hey, it's funny, you know, we talk about the jungle too. I remember the days of, of the match racing days with jungle and we don't guys there. And I think you remember the story, Rocky, where, Jungle did a burnout. I think he was running Beetle, and next thing you know, they switch lanes, and Jungle ends up driving the, up the track, hard running, they the U turn, and then he goes to run for the car. So, this is what the fans would die to see. They can't see any more big show cars. So, you know, what we're doing is 
you know, bring it back to them. Yeah, even with the dragsters back in the day, they used to do the long, smoky burnouts and dry hops. Like Don well, Don, back then, you know, you're talking about the, probably the mid '60s. Yeah, Don. You know, the clutch technology wasn't really, you know, uh, the way it is. Uh, splatter clutches. Them guys basically the one was the burnout. Yeah, you know, they would just smoke the tires because the tech that the clutches weren't stupid enough. And then once the clutches started coming around, they started to you know, realize that if they let the clutch slip a little bit, they get less tire smoke, the cars went quicker. And, you know, that's basically, the you know, dragsters themselves, basically, that's where the show kind of started and for that. Uh, they weren't quite as known as well for the, you know, the, the actual long, smoky burnout. The long, smoky burnout, at one point in drag racing, uh, was very much needed to get the heat in the motor, to set the clutches, get the tires hot. And as drag racing kind of developed, a lot of these tuners realized the long burnouts were necessary, and that's the reason why you don't see them today. Yeah, a lot of these guys don't even want to begin to try to like get the clutch hot. You know, it's a whole different ball game with the way they run. But again, you're giving performances now that we're running 330 mile an hour, and they're running three seconds and dealing a thousand foot. Um, unfortunately, the the show aspect, as far as that burnout and dry hops, that stuff goes to the wayside. And that's why yeah, we tune our cars to be able to do those long burnouts. You know, I know we can run a lot quicker and a lot faster if we, you know, go through those burnouts, but to me, that's what the fans want. The fans want that glimpse of, you know, again, what the funny cars look like. You know, we're calling nostalgia funny car for a reason. You know, we're not out there to run, you know, 550s. You know, we're out there to run, you know, uh, the numbers I mean, were actually way quicker than they were for the time period we're trying to emulate. But we're, we're, we're out there to put the show on. You know, we set the car up to do the long burnout, uh, to make the flames, to make the dry hops, to be able to do the 3-4 dry hops going the line, and be able to run the car without blowing it up that way, you know. And to us, it's kind of like, the, you just, you know, I don't go by the EPM you know, school board front. I go by how the fans react to it. And the first thing I always ask after one is, you know, how was the burnout? How was the fans' reaction? And as long as they're on their feet cheering, I'm happy. So to me, uh, the fans are happy, the guy that's saying this is happy, and that's the most important part to us. You know, the funny thing, Rocky brings up the section, Rocky brings up his fans on their feet. I think it was uh, two years ago, or maybe the last year, we went to Bowling Green, we ran Bruce there, and Rocky you know, was full force of miles burning out, and Bowling Green was full force of miles burning out. And he's backing up, and I can see every fan is on their feet in their point. And that's what, you know, we're here. We're here to put the show up. And that's what the fans wanted to see. They didn't care how fast they went. They wanted to see what they used to see when they went to um, Bowling Green. When they went to the beach then, and they were 16 or 24 parks in. And that's what they put the show up. Yeah. Yeah, same, 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 same thing with the nostalgia pro stocks. You, the fans want to see the long, smoky burnouts and dry ops come back. Oh, yeah, a lot of those burnouts has been there like for uh, Yeah, we're all, you know, basically, people got to understand, at least the racers. I, I get asked this a lot of times over the years. You know, we've been, you know, I just seen an advertisement that uh, just popped up, I, I believe it's from 91 or 92, the you know, dragway that had two of our cars back to the days of the hot watch hell. You know, and that's just, again, you know, I've been racing with, you know, for basically either booking shows or different organizations that went out to the show since the early 80s. And a lot of people have asked me over years, like, well, how do you pay, you know, to do this stuff? And I always tell them, I said, we're entertaining. I said, we're out there to make those people understand, you know, have a good time and remember something. Now, I tell everybody, and this is more true than I can even, you know, even to myself. When we stage in this car, and that cop won't be great, I don't care who's in the other lane, I'm there to kick that person's ass. You know, we're drag racers from that point on. But up to that point, I know I have to go back there and, like Al said, pretty backup girls, beautiful cars that they can actually recognize, the long burnouts, dry ops, uh, everything we can do, we're there to go to show on. But don't think for a second when that light doesn't say that the first pre stage light goes on. You know, I'm there. I don't care if it's my own car I'm racing against. I don't care if I'm racing against, uh, you know, again, whoever. I'm there to win. And so is the guy in the other plane. Then we go out there and we run the cars. You know, we have 
ahead and tuned up. We'll go up there and we run the best we possibly can. And, you know, we're drag racers, but we understand one thing. We're also entertainers. And for, for this sport to survive, this sport to grow, and for these fans to keep coming back, they want a show. And that's our number one job is to put that great show on. Now, now, when you guys do these big big events with a lot of funny cars, do, it, do a lot of the other drivers do the long, smoky burnouts and dry happen? Um, again, a lot of the racers, again, that are going out there, that go out there to uh, compete, as in the, either the Heritage Series or these types of events, they're not going to do the big burnouts. They're not going to do the dry hop. That's kind of why a lot of these tracks will book us in along with them, because they know we're going to go out there and put that show on. So, as far as the nitro cars, we're probably the only ones really out there emphasizing the show aspect. Um, you know, we also had a promo racing. You know, we won the Freight Food, we won the Super Camaro, we also had the Screaming Eagles, the uh, Alcohol Funny Park. There's a lot of these shows that, you know, the alcohol guys go out there and they really do great going out there, they really do get a good show on. And, uh, you know, we just go out there, like I said, I don't care what I'm running or what I'm driving, be my dancers, my metro car, the alcohol car. My number one job is always put, uh, you know, the fans first, and that's for the show one. If that means we're not going quite as quick as everybody else, then oh well. And uh, we're very, we're blessed this year. We went out, we ran a 617 and 232 in one of our quick alcohol cars, which was, you know, put us right at the top of the country as far as 18 mile an hour. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, you know, you still do a long burnout. I say, yeah, the burnout is the more important part than need day. You know, it's nice to be able to do both, and we can do both. Uh, it's just a matter of we know that, you know, to be able to go out there and try to get the car to run, say, 590s on an alcohol combo, we know we couldn't do that real, real long burnout. But I'd rather run a temp or two slower and put the show on, too. So, so now, Rocky, what, what do some of the other uh, Nostalgia Nitro Funny Car drivers say to you about your uh, long, smoky burnout and dry happen? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, that's, that's kind of a, um, I guess, a sticky uh, subject. A lot of guys look at us and go, okay, you know, we're, they're running a couple of tenths faster than us, they're running 10, 15 mile an hour quicker, they're not getting paid to show off the race. And they're asking me, well, why are you get paid? And we're not. And it's not so much, you know, I look at this way, say, guys, you know, all these tracks know one thing. We're going to come out, you know, we're going to put a great show on for their fans, and we're going to go A to B, and, you know, they know we're going to do this, and that's the reason why our phone rings, that's the reason why we get a lot of bookings. A lot of these guys go out there, and they really do try to run quick. And I'm not taking up the way from them, but, again, it's the show is just not as important to them. So what occurs is, again, we get a lot of bookings, you know, we go out there, and we have a good following, and it works real well for us. And, um, again, the guys act that, you know, that we, we, we race basically against our selling go pretty far, so we got the same mindset we have as far as the fellow. A lot of what I call the fastest out stars, um, again, they're there for, you know, they're paying money to enter an event to try to win. So in their, in their mindset, well, they're not getting paid to be there to put a fellow. They're getting paid... To go, they're, they're paying to enter the race to try to go around and go fast. So it's like everything else in life. You know, you know, you know a million ways to skin a cat. You know, we go out there with a show one, and that's the main, main number one thing. You know, then after that, it's to go fast. So like I said, most of the guys, the ones that realize it, are all for us. The ones that you know, uh, you know, they may think, well, you know, we're taking our bookings because we're out there, you know, again trying to show both. But, you know, we, you know, it's, it's the bottom line. You know, we're, we're going to a race with people in the stands that want to be entertained. And that's the bottom line. We have to entertain them first, and then we got to... We also, we also got to thank our sponsors. I mean, these are the guys that give us money year after year, give us parts, you know, to put a show on. And, you know, without, you know, some of our sponsors, and again, I'm going to jump in, Rocky, and I'm going to name some of them, before I do that, I gotta thank Bobby Fry. Uh, Bobby Fry has been very instrumental uh, with myself and Rocky. Uh, we were able to get the Ford uh, Freight Ford Main logo licensed through uh, Ford Global Motorsports, which is pretty rare. And you know, to have the Ford name on the car and the logo on the car is—you uh, don't see that quite often. So you know, these guys. 
guys have been behind us, been behind the first four nights tonight. But again, you know, it keeps us on the track, it keeps us the fan happy, or, or some of our fun, and, you know, projects we have for the past few years, like the Visual Isle, uh, CRC, Fortune uh, Team, they're one of our major sponsors, uh, they do everything with the floor in the shop, you know, they play our chat. Uh, Jeff Davis, Specialized Watercraft, uh, love, love him to death. He's uh, seen in our three to four, two or three times, the uh, Super Camaro, probably two or three times. Uh, again, my uh, heart goes out to his family. His uh, mom just passed away, so uh, we're always thinking about Jeff. Uh, Bobby Performance, so they do the rings and the pistons for us. Uh, Bobby Fry with Ralph Dental Marketing. The Wires, uh, maybe behind the three to four, next year's in 50 years. To have the Maguire's name on the red port. Uh, Nikki Bonaparte, Bonaparte Clutch, you forgot one of all our cars, but, uh, you know, she's a clutch standing right. Like, Cut it down. Uh, been behind us about three or four years already. Great wife, we're using their shop, using them all over. Racing Junk, another one of our premier sponsors. Uh, Big Ben, DJ, and uh, they've got sent to us. Phoenix Performance, we do our fittings, uh, MSD. A new sponsor we have on board, Jersey Peak Media, kind of unique sponsor. They do LCD, high definition, digital signage on a truck for you to be able to be ready for videos, different events this year going up. Uh, 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 American Rebel, they provide the wheels on the car, and this year they're going to come out with the Starburst wheels, just looks just like the original wheels in 1959. Earpiece, you guys keep our hearing in line, they think, uh, Racing Gear Plus. Got a new sponsor, Pig, the Pig Corporation. Uh, they've been real helpful to us this year. Last, uh, got on board last year. They do environmental, uh, math, anything with environmental cleanup, stuff like that. These guys, uh, help us out. So keep on our uh, race car nice and clean, nice and dry. PPG, they've been changing our party cars. I think Rocky is probably a fifth year. And, uh, you know, whatever we need, we give them a call. Mr. Gas, we'll have a sponsor and champion. Both have been with Brady for almost 50 years. Uh, Aaron at IR Design, he's the guy who does our crew shirts, so we're going to have some new crew shirts this year. Uh, Dan Pyro, uh, Zap on Tools, he's been behind us, uh, giving us tools, giving us some help if we need it. Mechanics wear at MH Tire. Randy from Redline Shirt Club, another good friend of the family. Uh, everybody knows them, Redline Shirt Club, been out there for years. Change Engineering, Quick Latch, Velcro Gasket, uh, Clark. Uh, Mr. Clark out of Minnesota, they give up our head gasket, uh, ground fun glasses. I think I might have got them all before the end of the hour, or the end of the half hour. But again, without these guys, without the part, and the dollars and the money we get and the support, we wouldn't be around, we would not be out here supporting and the product we're putting on the show for them. Now, now, Al, what, what, when did, when did, what got you involved in drag racing, and what year did you get involved in drag racing? I got involved in drag racing probably in my high school time, high school age, somebody said, oh, you need, to, you need to get a funny car. And then I went to school in California, that's when I got involved in probably early 70s with a bunch of funny cars out there. Pat Foster, uh, Chicago Patrol, Chiba, that was one of the first cars I was involved with. And, uh... Fortunately or unfortunately, I've been involved with it for probably close to oh, 45 years. Uh, so uh, I missed it over the winter. Uh, you know, I'm not near the shop. Or I'm busy working my regular job and everything else. But, uh, you know, always uh, call on sponsors to come out. And, you know, when I get a chance to put my hand on the starter and start that bad boy up. But, you know, it's like... Um, well, what is it? Like, it's a defibrillator, I say. It's like getting your heart in the heart here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, how did you meet Rocky, Al? Um, I met Rocky, I guess, probably at the first funny car reunion, you know, and I was not involved with a bunch of cars. I got out of the big show cars with Gary Dench in 2000, and I got into Hot Hot, and um, met him at a couple of shows, and then got involved in 2009 with a few other fans at Ford, uh, but unfortunately it didn't work out, and we went to Rocky in 2011, and he told him what we wanted to do, and, you know, he knew of me, and he knew of my success with my sponsors, and Steve Bobby and everything, and, again, the relationship that Robbie, excuse me, that Rocky had, 
the father built in the transition for the Fairy Sport, how can you say no? Now, how long has Bobby Frey been with you guys? Uh, Bobby's been with, you know, I know Bobby probably, you know, in the late 70s or 80s, but he worked for a bunch of guys and got involved with Bobby in 2009 and then carried on ever since. Now, would you ever, would you guys ever consider going to Funny Car Chaos? I'm sorry, what was that again, Dave? I said, would you guys ever consider going to one of the Funny Car Chaos events? Yeah, we're, we're talking about it. Uh, you know, Randy's a good friend of ours, and uh, you know, we've, we've, we've briefly touched on it. Our, our biggest problem is the amount of events that we already do. And um, it's just a matter of fitting the extra ones in there. Um, personally, uh, to get a chance to go, uh, I, I would love to do the one down in Texas because, again, just uh, the people down there are just such great people and we really enjoy being down there. Uh, I know they're really starting to, you know, expand it. Uh, they got the one in the Midwest. But uh, we're hoping if everything lines up, we can do the, uh, the one, I believe it's in September or the later in the fall, uh, the one down there. And we're not committed to it yet, but uh, it's, it's definitely a possibility. And, uh, I would love to go there, again, going down there at least with the, uh, with the Frank Ford and just lay down a killer, killer, killer burnout and get a great show. I mean, they got a lot of fast cars there, but same thing. It's almost like a national event anymore where everyone's trying to, you know, hold back on the burnout part of it. But if we get a chance to go down there, uh, we promise that we're going to put a, a great show on for the fans. Yeah, you are. Like Rocky says, you know, that, that's what we're there to do. At least you remember before the interview is done. <laughs> yeah, I think the funny car cast fans would all be on their feet seeing you do that long, smoky burnout, Rocky. Yeah, well, again, I, I was really hoping to be able to get the, the Bakersfield this year. We got a chance to be here a couple of years ago with our uh, Chaos Tipping car and our Big John Mads and one of our alcohol funny cars. Uh, unfortunately, we had a uh, very good friend of ours, Henry Sweetman, going into the East Coast Drag Times Hall of Fame. We were uh, already committed to being uh, down in Henderson you know, uh, for his induction. Um, if, uh, again, the date was the final weekend, we'd be in Bakersfield. I was planning on leaving, leaving Henderson and driving straight out. But unfortunately, like uh, a lot of events that happened for us, uh, there's so many things happening right now in the South of Drag Racing. It's almost, you have to make your, you have to choose what events, you know, you want to do. But um, maybe uh, for the 50th anniversary of the Frantic Board, um, maybe we can make it to Bakersfield the following year. Uh, I think that would be a real cool deal, and if we can make it happen, I would love to go to Southern California. I would love to go back to Bakersfield and just lay down a quarter mile burnout at, you know, at sunset with some nice screens over the roof and, uh, and just put and, and an awesome show for uh where the Frantic Ford actually started. You know, the Frantic Ford, say, you know, the original, uh, you know, Fox Rubio, 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 holding, uh, you know, a crew back, you know, in weekly, you know, back in, uh, back in the 60s. You know, it's funny, we're looking for all pictures there, especially on the Frantic Ford Facebook page, whatever. We have pictures of the Frantic Ford, and we're looking for 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 Bring the Frantic Ford name and a recreation of the car back to the West Coast, I think the standard will go up. Yeah. Now, Rocky, when you were talking about the Bakersfield event, were you talking about the March meet? No, the uh, California Hot Rod Reunion. Ah, okay. Uh, I was, four or five years ago, we got a chance to take the. Uh, our KS Pittman and Big John Mazmanian tribute uh, gassers back to California. And um, we had uh, Bones Baylog, the original driver, who drove the car back in the 60s, drive it. And uh, Freddie Bear drove the KS33, and we put a couple exhibition ones down. 
And uh, the fans loved it, and uh, I loved bringing those cars back to Southern California, and I would love to bring the Frantic Ford back to Southern California also. Then I know when we did that first interview with you, Rocky, we, I, we were telling you, we'd love to see you come down to the legendary Great Lakes Dragway in Union Grove, Wisconsin, and lay down some burnouts. Well, we will be at uh, Martin, Michigan, uh, US-131 uh, this year, which I think uh, we're getting close to, uh, to Wisconsin. Uh, that's going to be, I don't have the actual date on me, maybe out there. We'll have the Super Camaro there with the Screaming Eagle, uh, the Frantic Ford, I uh, won't be making that trip, but uh, it'll be cool to go back to that racetrack. I never got a chance to run at the at Great Lakes Drag where I was longer running there also. But it's nice to go back to Michigan. I haven't been to Michigan uh, to race uh, probably in four years. So uh, yeah, who knows? You know, hopefully we can get something with Great Lakes. Like I said, give us a plug to the, to the track owner. Uh, we would love to be there with the Frantic Ford and Super Canal, but a great show on. Yeah, I think a lot of the fans at Great Lakes Drag their jaws will drop. Um, that that's that's our that's what our uh, our main our, our main goal is make those people go wow you know and uh, uh, unfortunately uh, the, the long smoky burnouts the dry hops and all that stuff it's become a lost art and uh, you know we're going to keep on trying to bring it back. Yeah, we have two big events at Great Lakes Track, which is uh, Memorial Day weekend and uh, Labor Day weekend Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, and we only get two nostalgia funny cars though. Every every year it's the same two guys. You got Boz Young with the uh, Down Under Thunder, and you got Doc Holliday's Telstar. Well, that's two quality cars that you got there. Uh, both are good friends of ours. Uh, Jerry Newman is uh, uh, actually he's our uh, architect for our, our, our Nitro Funny Cars as far as the tune up. He tunes both of those cars, and uh, he's a great guy. And again, we would love to run more of the Midwest stuff, and uh, you never know. Um, this, stuff, this stuff continues to grow. Uh, that's the cool thing about it. You know, nostalgia racing, it isn't, you know, people ask me, and we started nostalgia racing back in 1981, you know, with the gas when we brought them out, and everybody kept asking, well, you know, maybe five years, it'll be, you know, done. I've been hearing that now for the last 25 years. And it's so cool to see this just keep on growing and keep on growing and keep on growing. So, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, more and more of these, uh, the fans, you know, request us seeing at the racetracks, and if they do, and the track owners call soon enough, uh, you know, we can book them in. Well, our problem right now is that we have so many racetracks that, you know, that are at dates that, you know, of course we always try to run the same tracks that, you know, the book the senior fire well, always do to them first choice. Uh, once they say yes, and that's it, and so we're, I don't, I don't know the exact thing, I believe we're about 18 at this point now, there's just only, there's only so many weekends that we can do this stuff. And, um, you know, just seems like as of this moment right now, I don't think we really have a free weekend to bring in any other uh, race date on the schedule. But there's always next year, and we're always looking forward to going to a new place that, you know, we have them for. And again, we would love the one great way. Yeah, that would be awesome to see you up there. So, Al, you got anything else to talk about? Boy, I don't know. I hope I didn't talk myself out, but, uh, no, you know, Never. Yeah, thanks, right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we talk about the Frantic Ford. We really can't forget about the, uh, the Super Camaro. I mean, that's, uh, I would say, the, the, the brother of the, the Frantic Ford, uh, our teammate. Uh, and again, we have, I got to thank uh, Perry Wyatt Jr. out of, um, God, I think he's come out of Detroit. Uh, Perry's father originally had one of the Super Camaros, and uh, myself and Rocky went to Perry probably three years ago and told them what we wanted to do. We wanted to do Ford versus Chevy. We were thinking of names and there's a lot of other names out there. Uh, the Supercar did not really uh, race that many places. I know it went to Great Lakes a bunch of times and probably a couple places in Wisconsin and around the Michigan area, Detroit area. And, um, you know, with the help of, again, CPG and Jeff Davis and, and Glenn, Glenn Designs, uh, knocked it out of the ballpark, uh, no vinyl, all paint. All hand lettered, probably one of the best looking nostalgia funny cars out there, and that's what everybody tells us. And, you know, to run the Ford versus Chevy, Chevy versus Ford, that's what the fans want to see. Um, you know, 69, 70 Camaro, uh, 69, 70 uh, Mustang, early 70s Camaro, it's a perfect fit. So, you know, again, Harry, uh, you know, with his uh, blessing, letting us use the name and, you know, making a trip out to, uh, Martin, I think it's 
August, or, I think it might be August or September. Uh, he's happy because the car the name hasn't been back there. He hasn't seen the car out there. He's been able to race it. But it was just, uh, you know, it makes everybody happy. So, you know, running both those cars and my bracket said Screaming Eagle, uh, we, got, we got our hands full in this full racing camp. That's good. So, so now, Rocky, for for this season, uh, are you and Joe Morrison going to be sharing the driving? Uh, we'll be using a couple of different drivers. We'll actually be running three funny cars this season. Uh, like Gal said, we'll be running the, the Frank Ford and the Super Camaro, both the Beal Nitro, and then the Spring Eagle. We'll be running that a lot more this year on alcohol. So um, as of right now, uh, uh, Brian Garlick, uh, myself, uh, Joe Morrison, and probably one more pilot to be named will be in the location for driving. Um, that Joe Morrison's a, an excellent driver and an excellent friend, a great friend. And um, Joe comes down, does a lot of crewing, he spends a lot of time at the shop, he work on the car. Uh, he does excellent job driving the car. And um, you know, when you know, when the can only really depends on where we're at. Uh, you know, who is available, and uh, then we go from there as far as the driving aspect of it. Um, you know, again, I love driving a Metro funny car. Uh, Joe's the only really licensed driver I have right now, besides myself, to drive a Metro car. So we're the ones that kind of split the duty on the, uh, on the frantic floor. Um, again, uh, you know, Joe's one of those guys that I can put in the car, and I know he drives the car as well, if not better, than myself. And it's always a good feeling when I can put a person like that in the, in the seat. Um, yeah, everyone thinks that it's so easy to drive these cars, but uh, it takes a lot of talent, and it takes a lot of talent to put a great show on, uh, not to over-rev it on the burnout, you know, not to blow the thing up on you. And uh, Joe always takes care of my equipment, and always does a good, always puts on a great show. So, you know, again, to me, uh, you know, Joe's one of those guys that... Uh, I wish uh, I, I wish we had more events. I wish I had more time to put in his car. You know, because uh, like I said, he's one of those guys I really enjoy watching drive it. You know, it's funny. You know, we put Joe in the car last year. Joe got in the car and he, he, he drove it like, like I said, he drives it like it's all. I mean, he's meticulous on everything. If the car's doing something wrong or feels, doesn't feel right, he takes a sweat out of it. And you know, I, I got to say. You know what he said? I, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to bring the car back in pieces. I want to. I want to bring it. I want to leave the racetrack the way I came in. So you know, we made a good choice with Joe, and you know, like I said, Joe's great around the shop, great with people, great marketing guy. He loves to help, loves everything. But as for you know, I've never parted with Rocky to Grand Force. Try it. Okay, just so you guys know, I I only get forty five minute segments, and we got a minute and thirty seconds, so. Do you guys want to finish up? Yeah, I'm going to finish up. If you don't mind, uh, anybody else to follow the Frantic Force, to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, our website, franticforce.com, Super Camaro, the return to Super Camaro, uh, Facebook, supercamaro.com website. Uh, we're always out there. We always want people to come to join us. Check us out. Check out our old pictures. In the 70s, check out our sponsor, check out our video, YouTube, we're out there for the fans. Sounds good. Well, thank, thank, thank you for having us. Oh, no problem. Yes, thank you. And anytime you guys want to get on, let me know. Sounds awesome. Well, always a pleasure. You guys All right. Are, all right. Thanks, guys. All right. Have a good have night. Good night, all right. good night guys. Take care. Bye. Bye. Okay, that was Rocky and Al, the frantic Ford nostalgic Nitro Funny Car. I hope you guys enjoyed the interview. Join in tomorrow. I have a couple interviews, so have a good night, everyone.